Well, welcome along to The Pastor's Heart. Dominic Steele is my name. It's great that you could join us this afternoon. And uh, this week, we're actually doing two editions of The Pastor's Heart. Uh, the whole issue of religious freedom has been such a huge one uh, in Australia this last week, uh, with the issue really on the front page uh, many days over this last week. Uh, tomorrow, we're actually going to be joined for a special edition of The Pastor's Heart by Michael Callahan, and uh, he's the Executive Director of Freedom for Faith. And so uh, we'll be putting a series of questions to him about this whole subject of religious freedom. Uh, today, though, we're talking the whole process of welcoming people to your church. And uh, I'm really pleased that we've been able to have with us uh, Andy Hobbs from uh, Salt Church in Wollongong. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Hello. Good and uh, David Allen from Hunter Bible Church uh, up in uh, Newcastle. And yep. it's great to have you with us, uh, David. Now, you guys have thought, both of you, a lot about these questions. Um, mm. uh, we're going to talk in a moment about the, the whole issue of um, uh, welcoming. But the pastor's heart. And uh, what's a journey that God has taken you on where you've grown as a pastor, as a man, um, in your relationship with him, something like that. Andy, mm -hmm. yeah, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I think for us as a church, uh, this year has been a, a little bit of a difficult season, so I found mm -hmm. myself in the role of acting lead pastor. Yeah, and in an unexpected way. Yeah, 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 yeah. and so that's been uh, uh, getting my head around that, around the new role and learning to do things I hadn't done before, leading, um, leading a staff team and managing a budget with the admin committee and some of those kind of things. So some challenges there, lots of joys as well. But um, yeah, I think seeing God's goodness in that, seeing mm. God provides the things that we need when we need them and mm. growing my trust of him. So mm. yeah. Mm. Dave, what about you? Uh, yeah, I was, I was reflecting on this. Um, I think my role, obviously, with in terms of helping people join church, or at least that's part of my role, is, I mean, I love my church, I'm really keen for people to join church, and so that, having lots of conversations with people about, in a sense, saying to them, come and join. Mm. Uh, but I, I don't feel like I'm a very persuasive person. And so, uh, and so having those conversations with people and, f and seeing people not join us and then going, oh, what have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. How could I have done that better? You know, and they're helpful questions to reflect on after you've had conversations with people. But um, I think one of the things I've seen over the years as I've done this and done this and done this is going... Uh, part of my motive in that is going, wanting to please people. Mm -hmm. If I can just say the right words that will make people happy with me, then they'll join my church. Mm -hmm. um, and taking a step back and going, oh, hold on, I, you know, I say, I, I confess that I trust that God is mm -hmm. sovereign. I know God will do what he wants to do. He will call his people. Um, and so going wanting to please him and serve his agenda. I mean, I believe those things, I just wasn't mm. expressing those things in my heart, I guess would be the right way to put mm. it. And so having to take a step back and going, no, no, I need to be honest with people and act with integrity and yes, be kind and compassionate mm -hmm. and all that. But in the end, it's people will make their decisions about whether to join or not. And that's in God's hands. Mm. It's not in mine. I mm. think that was a... Uh, that's I'm still learning that lesson, mm, but yeah. it's a key lesson that I've mm. been learning. Mm. Yeah. Let's start on the process of welcoming. Mm. And when are the peak times in the year where churches are likely to get most newcomers? Dave, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, January. Mm -hmm. January, we'll get um, anywhere up to 40% of our year's visitors will come January, February, those two months. It's like biggest um, we've got a uni congregation that's skewed yeah so I'm, I'm just going to say have you done a breakdown but if you feel like between cutting out the uni congregation would that still be true oh uh, for uni congregation if it takes it's definitely true in the uni congregation uni congregations feb uh march right, February, okay, march. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like half our intake for uni is in mm -hmm. that time but uh for our other congregations january february it's 40 percent roughly coming really? that month or months yeah yeah Andy, what about you? Uh, similar, yeah. I think January, February for us in Wollongong is probably similar to, to Newcastle, um, transient kind of city. So a lot of people moving in, and that's the partic particularly Christians moving into the area early in the year, looking for a church, but also 
people who aren't, aren't Christian. But the second one would be probably September, October. Really? Right. Yeah, those two. Probably. And, and where are you putting kind of Easter and Christmas in that in that mix? Um, uh, would, would you say you'd say January, October, Easter, Christmas, or how would you th would think of it there? Uh, well, we get lots of visitors in um, in Christmas and Easter, mm -hmm. um, but are they wanting to stay? Yeah. Yeah. No, they, so they might come. Um, but they generally they won't hand a card in, so mm -hmm. we can't follow them up, uh, and so I'll notice them, but they'll be it. Can't do anything mm -hmm. with that other than say good day to them, try and make the mm -hmm. most of the conversation on the day. Um, but we are starting to see people who come to Christmas, and then they'll come to. We run a kids mission in, in January, January, yeah, and they'll come to that. Mm. And you got to be carols. Yeah, that, well, so. yeah, we have massive carols yeah. just before Christmas. Yeah, and so people will come to those events. And then they'll start to come and check out church. But there's a really big push of not to go to sleep in January, not to be um, kind of put the B team on, if you like. Yeah, yeah, we've actually just changed our preaching roster so our best preachers are on in January. Mm. We want to have our A team on mm -hmm. because we just have so many visitors. We want to actually give them a... And even though it's harder to do the warm suppers and the good morning teas and stuff like that, that kind of follows through across the board, really. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's harder to do it because lots of people, you've got more guests but less regulars at that time. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, what about someone, Andy, who just comes to church? What's the process that happens when, I mean, I'm not, I'm not so much talking about them getting to the front door, I mean, but from once they've Afterwards, arrived. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we, we recently, last year, rethought through our follow-up process because mm -hmm. we want to, people matter, and so we want to make sure people are followed up well and so that we give every opportunity for people to, to join our church and keep coming back and hearing about Jesus. Um, and so we just rethought last year the, the process and the, the, the three factors we're thinking through is that we want the follow-up process to be relevant, we want it to be timely, and we want it to be achievable. Um, and, uh, and I think that's an important thing for someone to think through. What is it, firstly, what does it look like to be relevant and the follow-up to be relevant in such a way that it works for the people that you're trying to reach? Mm -hmm. Like a SMS and emails might work for some people, but others they might feel that's really cold and impersonal and they'd rather a phone call. Or younger people don't answer their phone. They never use their phone for actually phoning people. Mm -hmm. They just block the calls. And so maybe they've got to work out, there's other things, Facebook messengers and, or whatever it is, or home visits. Some people, that's, so you've got to work out who it is. For us, it's, it's SMS and email. So we do, um, when someone visits the first time, we'll send uh, an SMS on the Monday, uh, and then an email on the Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, and then another SMS on Saturday, really trying to get the first time and to come back a second time. Um, and right, so you'll reach out three times in that first week. Yeah, if they, if, uh, we, so we, we have connection cards on a Sunday, we try and get everyone to fill it out on a Sunday, including all the members, um, to try and maximise the opportunities that visitors are going to actually mm -hmm. fill it out if they look around and everyone's filling them out together. Um, but yeah, if, if, if they give us a mobile number and an email, we'll do mm -hmm. both. Would you ever invest, um, I mean, an email and SMS, they're not actually that expensive in terms of time. Yeah. More expensive is visiting. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you do a visit in the, in, on the, the one-off person? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I think the people that come to our church would freak out at yeah. that. Uh, the church I was at previously, that was a normal thing, um, particularly with older people. That's they really appreciated that, mm -hmm. and that was so. I think it's really you got to work out what's going to be relevant for the people in your church and the people in your area, and so you have a chat with people and kind of kind of gauge that. But yeah, we I, I, part of the reason we've done this is I, I said achievable. Um, we had a, a system where previously the lead pastor would send an email. And that was just, he was becoming the bottleneck mm -hmm. for that happening, and so that wasn't achievable. So we're trying to instead uh, do it in such a way that it's, it's pretty easy up front, and because we have a fairly high level of first-timers visit, mm -hmm. and then it tapers off in some ways. As people come back a second time, um, we put well, more we'll, we'll get to a second time in yeah. a minute. Let's go, we'll stay on first time with you, Dave. What, what happens? Somebody walks into Hunter Bible Church, and you've somehow got their details. Um... Uh, we'll send them a we we'll send them a letter, snail mail. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, try and be a bit more personal, mm. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, it, is it a form letter or is it sort of? Um, I guess it's pretty form. It's yeah. pretty form, but we'll 
try, try and try to customize it. Yeah, yeah. depending on what mm -hmm. they've put on their card, mm -hmm. um, if we can. Mm -hmm. Handwritten. No, type, type it, but yeah. I was, like I say, if there's anything to put on their card, I'll yeah, adjust yeah. the yeah, letter yeah. And it's you usually who sends that, that letter? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll send the letter. Uh, wanted to go out by the latest Wednesday, so they get it before the weekend. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's... It's, it's pointless, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, everyone will get a phone call if they've given us their mobile. In the first week? Yep. That's, that's the... The goal. The goal. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Everyone gets a phone call. Yep. Right. And if they've given us their phone details, then I'll go, then they're happy to be called. Okay. So we've got, at this stage, two different models going on, because really um, the model you've got, Andy, mm. is really just your, is it membership pastor? Is that what you call that person? Um, that person who's sending the, the text and sending the... No, ours no, is all volunteers. Do volunteers it. do yeah. that? So, yeah. okay. Well, so have you just got, you've got one person who's responsible for that sending, or how do you, um, how do you work it out? We've got it. There's a couple of people that sort through the connection cards mm -hmm. on Monday, and then through Alvanto, which we use to mm -hmm. church management stuff. Uh, you can assign that to someone, and there's generally one of the people that do the connection cards will then um, trigger the SMSs to go out through Alvanto. Right. What about you, um, Dave? You, you, so, the vol how does the system work with the team that's doing the 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 visiting? Oh, no, the phone calls. Sorry. Well, yeah. yeah so. Um, They'll do a phone call, and the idea with the phone call is to try and meet up with the person, for coffee, or yeah. over for a meal, or whatever it might be. Try and build a bit of a relationship with them, with the goal of mm -hmm. finding out where they're at, what will be helpful for them. And you're shooting for a phone call for every visitor. Everyone who hands a card in. Everyone hands a card in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, how? Um, it is the thing. <laughs> to, to get a card in, do they have to chase you or do you chase them? Do you know? Uh, to fill a card in? Yeah. Uh, we I mean, in, a, in our situation, mm. because we have a kind of check-in mm. thing where people check in on the, at the front door, mm. um, we get... I'm, I'm astonished at the number of emails and phone numbers that people willingly mm. give mm. us. Um, I think we were expecting people to be much more reticent to give us their details than they are. Mm. And so we've got to, we basically know everyone's name who visits, you know, which mm. I, I think that check-in system is, yeah. has been quite revolutionary. But it then also means people do visit but don't intend to come back, whereas mm. you're, you're getting, I suspect, richer contacts, if you like. Yeah. yeah, so we used to do, like, everyone filled a card in mm -hmm. um, and we stopped doing that. Uh, we can talk about that if you like, but and then it was we would invite people mm -hmm. to fill a card in. Um, and I actually have a team on a Sunday whose job it is to meet new people, mm -hmm. try and get to know them, and part of that conversation is invite them to find out more about us, mm -hmm. with a view to get, inviting them to fill out a card. And mm -hmm. um, when we moved from getting everyone to fill a card in to being personal invites, we obviously got much less cards, like we dropped significantly the number of cards we got, but um, the number of people who then moved, came back didn't change. Right. And it's now gone, started to go up. So mm -hmm. we didn't lose the total number of people who then started moving into church, didn't change at all, just the right. number of cards changed. Right. But I've always gone, if they give us their details, they are obviously oh, yeah. they're obviously willing to be mm. contacted. Now, yeah. I have phoned a lady and she was completely surprised. <laughs> mm -hmm. She said, "I've always, I've gone to heaps of churches and filled a card in. No one's ever contacted me." And mm -hmm. I went, "Oh, I mean, but she didn't blame me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she she blame we'll, them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're the friendly church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went, you gave me your phone number. I was going to meet you. So, but I don't do. Um, I have teams now who'll do, who'll do the phoning mm -hmm. and building the relationships because. Um, it's just too many people coming. Yeah. I can't do it. And, I mean, uh, I guess you've got a team in each... You, you've got four congregations, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so you've got a team in each of those congregations. Yeah. Or, um, now, okay, so we get to... We're seven days in. Mm -hmm. What happens then, Andy? So, yeah, so we've sent uh, two SMSs and an email. Uh, the goal of that is really just to get the first time back a second time. Mm -hmm. uh, they come back a second time. What kind of strike rate do you get coming back the second time one week later. I'm presuming it goes up 
by the fact that you've contacted them midweek as if you compared to if you hadn't contacted them mm. midweek. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess how closely it is that first week, but I think it's roughly about fifty percent of first timers for us come back a second time, mm -hmm. uh, and then a higher proportion of the second time is the third time. But um, yeah, I don't know how. I haven't tracked how closely mm. that visits are. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so we have second timers. Uh, someone comes a second time, visits a second time, we'll send another SMS on Monday saying, great to see you again. Um, we'll send uh, an email again, inviting them to uh, a relevant event. So if, they're, if we think they're a Christian, we'll invite them to our ah, members no. course. So how do you kind of make, you're making an early judgment on a different direction to go on whether or not you think they're Christian or they're not Christian. Hmm. Who makes that call and how do, where, do you, where do you do that thinking and where do you start to send them down hmm. different tracks? Yeah, know? yeah, well, I think it's safer to presume they're not Christian, um, but uh, we've got a team of people who are there on a Sunday and we call them the host team and they're doing the setup, they do the food. Um, we've got some baristas doing coffee um, and a couple of people greeting at the door, and those those people debrief after church, and try and list all the visitors, um, and um, have them do a quick gauge on whether whether they were they were think they were a missional contact or someone who's uh, a Christian. And often they don't get around to everyone, but um, we try and try and then do that way, use that to triage a little bit. Right. So the host team, who are doing the food yep. are also thinking, oh, particularly the people. Yeah, yeah, they're doing the food because of the people. Yeah, and that's been a, some people just want to do food and you've got to keep saying, no, you're doing food because of the people. So if you, if you, I'd rather you, you're about to bring out a plate of food, I'd rather you go and talk to that person by himself and leave the plate in the kitchen. Like the main thing mm -hmm. is talking to people. So mm -hmm. that's a bit of a shift for some people. But yeah, it's the, the host team is, they're hosting church. They're like you would at a party, you you care about the guests more than you do about the, the thing you're doing, but the thing you're doing helps the guests have a more relaxed time and mm. feel comfortable and feel help the space feel familiar. So host team, we try and emphasise. We, we've got a small church and these guys were able to do some of these things a bit differently, but home cooked food if we can and try and f make it feel a little bit more homely and mm -hmm. that kind mm. of style. Yeah. Dave, what's your action there? Uh, it's that follow-up team. Well, yeah, is, do you have the, are the food people the host people the same as the follow-up people or it's different teams no the yeah so we uh, we have our, our small groups mm -hmm. our hosts and we keep having again it's the same thing keep saying that your hosts you're not doing food people are happy to do food because it's mm. i know what i'm doing there's, there's clear measurable yeah. Yeah. key performance indicators yeah. <laughs> yeah. well it's, it's a job yeah whereas you yeah. say no you have a role your role yeah. is to be a host and so the, that idea of if you have people into your home what would you do if you had people into your home we wouldn't just give them food or give them a drink, although that explains why you do those things. You'd go, oh, there's toilets there, or there's, mm -hmm. oh, you've got kids. How about we look after your kids? You know, mm. it's that sort of. If just you see something needs fixing, you yeah. do it it's or being you move thoughtful. it. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. And so helping our small groups see that that's their role on a Sunday is we want to make this a place where people are welcome. And that's interesting. You've actually gone for your, for your community groups, your Bible study groups, to mm. be that role rather than... Do, do you do that or do you have people on a... a We've got a team. Specific mm. teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got three teams that rotate. rotate. Yeah, and that's how we're doing it. Three three teams unrelated to the small mm. groups. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, okay. Uh, so we've got one week in. Dave, you've... You've got a pretty good idea. I mean, what kind of strike rate do you get of when you've reached out for people with the phone call, reached out for people with the um, the email, or with, or no, the letter? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, email if we don't mm -hmm. get their postal address. Um, uh, this year, um, uh, over one in two have flowed into our membership course. Um, one in. One in two. First timers. Yeah. Yeah, well. If they found, found the card in one in two, it flowed into mm -hmm. a membership course. Uh, one in three are now in a small group. Have you got a sense of, um, of the number of people who visit, how many you get the card? 
what percentage would that be? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've just started very, very first stages of trying to work that out. So at the moment, um, I have it, my team on a Sunday, um, I just started to keep track of who came versus who handed a card in. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. Uh, and look, people people will come to church and they won't want to hand a card in or they won't want to hand a card in the first week they're there, they'll come back and they'll hand cards in, hand the card in third week there, fourth week, mm -hmm. that's all right. People make, people make all those sort of decisions. I want my team to be aware of who's there, who's new, mm -hmm. and to have the conversation with them so that they don't fall through the cracks, so they're not ignored or mm. forgotten. Mm. Um, and part of that conversation is inviting them to asking them if they'd like to find out more about church, mm. if they'd like to get connected into church. Yeah. And again, people will make that decision for themselves about whether they do or not, but we mm. want to be, do our part of saying, mm. do you want to, can we help you do that? Let me just wind back a little bit to mm. initial welcoming. Julia Hobbs has put in a question. Um, she said, a book I read on welcoming said that visitors decide whether to return in the first few minutes of walking in the door, even before they hear the sermon. How important is the initial welcome uh, another suggestion was to put the person with the biggest smile at the door. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> oh, first impressions, yeah, first impressions. But I, I get the I get the strength of that. I actually think people make their decision about, in terms of church, the warmth of church, in what happens in the ten minutes after mm -hmm. church finishes. They, they'll come in and they'll, they'll get that sense of, have these people thought about things? Mm -hmm. No, am I? Am I welcome here? But um, if they get, and they'll, you know, I can think of, you know, I've, I've been to a church where I listened to the sermon was brilliant, the music was wonderful, uh, and the first impressions were really good. We get to the end of church, you know, and no one spoke to my wife, mm. and the kids ran away from my kids so my kids couldn't play with them. And I get in the car and they're going, we never want to go back. Mm. Um, well, so I had that, a moment at our church a couple of weeks ago and I'd preached a talk and I thought it was a good one and I was um, standing right at the back of the room and I was just looking at um, a couple who were sitting in the back row who were new yeah. and uh, um, I thought I don't want to be the person who goes to have that conversation with them because uh, it's just better if somebody else does. Um, who's not paid to have the conversation. Who's not paid to have the conversation. <laughs> um, and I was kind of counting the seconds until that conversation started and um, I mean it happened and it yeah. happened in less than a minute yeah. but it didn't happen in as many seconds. No. <laughs> yeah. That kills me. It does. Like, I think like that minute, even 30 seconds is a huge amount of time for yeah. a visitor to be standing there. Uh, yeah. yeah, they yeah. feel very conspicuous and yeah. if no one engages with them they just go, this church does not want me here. Mm. That's what they walk away with thinking. Mm. Uh, mm. Now, it doesn't mean they won't come back but you just made it really hard for yourself to get them to come back. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I think you've got, a, a, sadly, you've got multiple opportunities where you can lose someone. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first impression. It's the at the end, the last ten minutes. It's the the gathering itself. It's uh, yeah. there's a book that's really helpful. Greg Atkinson, American guy, uh, Secrets of a Church, Secrets of a Secret Church Shopper. He was a ex pastor, and he's paid by he still is paid by churches, and he'd go around and he'd be a secret shopper at the church, and mm -hmm. and then give him a evaluation at the end and he's written a book that's pretty helpful about the big trap falls that big things that uh, churches stuff up mm. and um, one of them smell surprisingly and so smell he's saying is a big uh, indicator people don't remember it but it forms a long-term memory mm. of how a place smells particularly if you've got an older building it smells a bit moldy or something it's people can't put their finger on it but it just feels old so we've got a barista we've got a coffee machine at the front door we try and ramp and make coffees for no one just to get the smell out, and that's, you know, those kind of, those little things I feel like make a little bit of a difference. But I think it's ultimately, it's, it's, the, it's toilets. People. The toilets, yeah, yeah, clean toilets. If they smell important. clean, people go, oh. Yeah, this place is looked after, people care about it, and mm. yeah. I can yeah. trust my kids here, they're not going to pick up some contagious disease. <laughs> yeah, and the kids' space, even if it yeah. looks safe, and if the leaders look like they know what they're doing, and there's, it's hard because there's so many things, but I think that's... Yeah, that's important. Can I ask about welcoming? Yeah. Because you guys, um, you you're, you have a thing of, you don't have a welcome team. You've got all of church kind of welcoming. Is mm. that right? How does that? Uh, yeah, I guess I make, a, I make a distinction in my mind between, I see the congregation is the welcome team. Yeah. Because it's the responsibility of every Christian to love people. 
uh, and so and to love the stranger. So the congregation should welcome people, um, and I don't think it's too much to ask them to. I, I talk to them about you know to introduce yourself and to introduce some other people, someone you don't know, invite them for a meal. Or, like, oh, that's not that's not a big ask. Mm, yeah. Any any congregational member can do that. You don't have to be okay. a yeah. people person to do that. Um, but I have a another. I have a team. I call them the Connect Team, yeah, right. and their role is to try and have a intentional conversation, to take the initiative, have an intentional conversation with someone who's new, mm. inviting them to take a step into church. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the average congregational member, I go. It probably is too big an ask for them to go, there's someone you don't know. You take the initiative and go over and walk to talk yeah. to them and invite them to take a step into church. Most people will go, it's, it's just something. too hard. Mm. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Mm. It is. I know it's hard. <laughs> I'm an introvert. Yeah. Um, so, but you can ask the congregation to say, no, you're the welcome team. Your job is to love people. And they mm. go, yeah, my job is to love people. Mm. That's what I'm supposed to do as one of God's mm. people. Yeah. Um, mm. um, okay. Good. We've, we've finished week one. Mm. What's the journey people go on after week one, all the way through to, to, to community group, home group, Bible study group? Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, follow up team. They're the ones getting to know the person, finding out their where they're at spiritually, having those sorts of conversations with them. And so they'll do the. Oh look, you have big questions about Jesus. How about you go along to our uh, evangelistic course, which we call Life, um, and. I trust my follow-up team with that responsibility that they will mm -hmm. they'll do that and they, they'll take them along. They actually mm -hmm. go with them along to the life course and sit with them and introduce them to people and help them engage with the big questions about Jesus. How many of them do you have a year? Twenty percent of our visitors this year have handed cards in. Oh, oh sorry, no, no. How many times do you run the course in a year? Life course or yeah. leadership course? Life course is oh heck, it's four times a year. It's once a term. Mm -hmm. And then flowing goes for out, five weeks. Goes for five yeah. weeks, and then flowing out of that, they have a f sort of follow up. What do you do course. if somebody's just they've arrived on the last week of one course? The next one doesn't start for <laughs> ten weeks' time. Do you know? Um, oh, there's like they have a the life team have a they run a, f a small group coming out of that. So they would just invite them to come to that. Uh, so the life course evolves into a small group. Uh, unofficially. Unofficially, <laughs> as you know, they, they're a group of people who meet. Yeah. But it has a some ways it has a use by date. Mm -hmm. They're not signing up, I'm going to be coming to this every week no, for, no, no, no. for the yeah, rest but, of the year. But they, the same leaders of the life course become the small group leaders or it's a different group of different leaders? Uh, no, they have, yeah, they have two leaders. Well, yeah, they have assigned leaders for the follow-up course who aren't running, involved in running the mm -hmm. life course. They're, they're separate but part of the team, mm -hmm. as right. I understand it. Mm -hmm. Starting to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What about you, Andy? From week two yep. through to so school. week two, someone gets a, an SMS and an email inviting them to our uh, members course, um, and then a third, if they come back a third time, they will get a phone call from someone as well. Following that up, from a, we've got a team of volunteers that do a lot of that follow up and inviting to our mm -hmm. newcomers course, which we run five or six, seven times a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so from there, they then join Salt and join a small group. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What do you do with a person who thinks they're Christian but you're pretty sure they're not? Do you, do you say, come along to our Jesus course, our life course, do you introduce in God, whatever, or do you kind of let them track into your small group? Or? Um, we've... The one, I'm talking about the person who'd be insulted at the idea that uh, I'm not Christian. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we, we've been we were quite deliberate in the first couple of weeks of our membership course that it's preach Jesus really clearly and the death of Jesus really clearly um, so that we, we're trying to evangelise everyone there. even yeah. there. Mm. And then part of the, what a membership course does is it gives you time to have the conversations with people mm -hmm. to go, what are you thinking about church? You know, what are the issues you have coming from whatever church mm -hmm. you've come from? Are, no, they might not be, but they might be issues. Where, what are the questions you have? And be in the course of that going, you know, something that would be really helpful, helpful for you would be our life course mm -hmm. to answer mm. some of those big questions. And yes, I know, you know, we have new Christians go to that. We have people who very clearly mm -hmm. aren't Christian, don't identify as Christian. Um, and so, how about you go along to that? Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, we'd, so I've had those conversations um, mm -hmm. and we want to have them. Um, but, I mean, 
I mean, you know, people are people, aren't they? They, mm. they'll, they can still say, you know, they still say that they're Christian, identified, know the words to say. Mm -hmm. And you might go, I don't think you are, but you just keep, mm -hmm. I, I just keep trying to, okay, mm. I need to remember this person, I need to keep having these conversations with them and mm -hmm. follow them through on that. Mm. Um, yeah. Question from Claire Williams. Yep. Do you structure, coordinate people inviting each other into their homes beyond growth groups? I mean, have you found ways to do this that aren't totally awkward or weird? So I'm guessing you're thinking about, you, you said before, Dave, you want people to invite people out for dinner and homes. Hmm. To, um, I mean, obviously you're pushing for a culture of that, yep. but do you allocate people as buddies to do that? Um, we haven't got to that stage yet. I'm, I'm thinking that that's on the radar. Um, so you could invite people to do it and some people will do it and some people won't but I just again it's that thing of I don't want people to fall through the cracks you know and the bigger we get and the more people we have coming along you've just got to be more thoughtful about ensuring everyone gets an invite mm. Um, mm. every evening congregation there's a standing they a bunch of them go out for dinner afterwards because mm -hmm. it finishes in time for that and so uh, my connect team part of what they'll do is they're meeting talking to people is invite them to go to that dinner mm. um, and some do and some don't that's mm. the way of that we try and do a bit of strategic uh, uh, social pairing up I guess in some mm -hmm. ways and mm -hmm. get someone can you ask these people to come to your house for dinner yeah and do a little bit of that cool um, you talked about um, uh, the book um, Secrets of the Ch Ch Church Shopper. Yep, great. Um, other resources, other books around that are on this topic, kind of topic. Dave, uh, the book Fusion by was it Cici? Nelson, oh, Nelson, Nelson. Cici. Yeah. yeah, it's um kind of it's really good and then a bit irritating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's irritating in a really American way. Yeah, um, I think he puts. Uh, I get, you get that feeling as you read it that he thinks the his pathway, his process, that's what will make people Christian. And I'm yeah. going, it's the gospel that's the that gospel. makes people who yeah. does it. But he's really, um, and I, uh, he talks about giving people gifts when they come after their first time and second it's time. It's kind, of kind of full on, kind of over the top for me. Yeah. yeah. You've got to translate a lot of that to you, yeah. the Australian culture, I think, a lot of those books. But, but it's really but helpful in terms of reading a guy who thought about how to love people beyond the Sunday. And be organised in doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And even though I don't agree with him at point or follow him, it's because it's, it's wisdom and you translate it, you go, the book, the reason it's really helpful is you go, this is a guy who's thought about it. Yeah. I need to think about it. Mm. Uh, and, it and that's my responsibility is to think this through really carefully about what will be helpful for people in terms of loving them beyond the Sunday. Yeah, great. Yeah. Dave, Andy, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My guest has been uh, Andy Hobbs from Salt Church in Wollongong and uh, also Dave Allen from the Hunter Bible Church in Newcastle. And uh, you've been with us on The Pastor's Heart and uh, we'll be back tomorrow actually with a, uh, a special edition thinking about the whole issue of religious freedom and uh, Michael Callahan will be our guest, uh, the Executive Director of Freedom for Faith. Thanks for joining us this week on The Pastor's Heart. Mm -hmm.